topic of the discussion and hit the issues you typically find reluctant. Remove the facade to fill the gap with some substance. We undermining problems, expecting to overcome it. Please hold the applause. We doing it for the cause. People follow culture before they follow the laws. We rather face the friction and not attempt it at all. Persistence will find solutions once our contentment dissolves. There's a hard pill to swallow for anyone breathing. Both for folks who stay woke and those who be dreaming. We ain't slaves, yet we still ain't experienced freedom. What we need is the keys to access the kingdom. We're all in this fallen world trying to stay intact. I'm just a beggar point you out to where the bread is at. So follow the breadcrumbs like Hansel and Grant. And thank Yogi Bear and the thought engineer for that all. What's going on, good people? <laughs> we are back once again for another Monday. Man Talk Mondays. Man Talk Mondays, we are back. I'm Derek, the thought engineer, who with my man, comedian John Yogi. Woo! What it do, what it do? It's all good over here, man. It's all good over here. Hope everything is well over there, with, especially with everybody out there listening. Appreciate the love. Appreciate you taking the time to, to be with us right now. But got to introduce the show. So let me let everybody know this is Man Talk Mondays. It's an open forum where we talk about everything from religion to politics to relationships. But of course, we're doing it from a man's perspective. So keep in mind, this is not just for men. We want everybody to participate, men, women, boys, and girls, children of all ages. You can participate in the conversation. Now, how you do this, you simply go in the comments, drop your comment, drop your question. We can see this, and this is how you talk to us. This is how you interact with us, and you are part of the conversation, right? So we want to hear from you tonight. Before we get into all of that, got a good show for you, but before we get into all of that, Ladies and gentlemen, Man Talk Monday News. This is Man Talk News tonight with your host, John D. Blackmon. And tonight's top story is bitty, 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 bitty. Halloween is a coming. So since Halloween is coming, I wanted to give you some do's and don'ts for Halloween costumes. Now, we were poor. We couldn't afford Halloween costumes. So my mom would get a fitted sheet and tell us to put that over our head, but we couldn't cut holes in it. Y'all figure that out. The first one is bad kids costume. There is no such thing as a bad kids costume where you wearing your regular clothes and you got a Walmart bag. Don't you come to my house. Don't you come to my house with no candy. The second one is, if your Halloween costume is a couple of years old and your sleeves is up to here and your pants look like a priest, don't you come to my house. The third one is, if you look as old as the person that's giving you the candy, don't you come to my house for trick or treat. If you able to drive to the different Halloween spots, you too old, don't you come to my house. Last but not least, I ain't giving out candy this year for Christmas. I'm giving out scriptural pamphlets, right? And the first pamphlet I'm giving out is going to say uh, Acts 2 and 47. Okay, I tell you right, I'm going to give out candy. So I told y'all, don't y'all come to my house if y'all in any one of them costumes. Happy Halloween. Good evening. And good night. <laughs> you gonna put Christmas? <laughs> he said Christmas. I'm like, oh, I'm put Christmas on that, man. man. You said <laughs> John D. tripping tonight. I don't know what's going on with it. He was on one, man. He was on one. Hey, ain't nothing like uh, somebody coming to you that's my trick or treat. <laughs> if you don't hey, get your old rusty behind out of here, talk about some trick or treat. 
Hey, you better give him a treat, man. These kids crazy these days, boy. I be to mess your house all the way up, oh, man. For real, for real, man, for real. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Let me remind everybody: make sure you subscribe to our podcast. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Spreaker. I mean, just all, any any way you want to go look at podcasts, listen to podcasts. You can go. You can find Man Talk Mondays. That is Man Hyphen Talk Mondays. You got to put the dash in there, the, the hyphen. Make sure you put it in there. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Click on the notification so anytime we go live, you'll know, right? Whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on YouTube, make sure you click the notification and you get an alert when we hop on, right? But you know who we on Monday nights, right? Seven o'clock central, seven o'clock central. We've been on here about a year and some change. About, about a year and a half, man. We, yeah. We've been running pretty strong for about a year and a half, man. So yeah, yeah. appreciate everybody that's been rocking with us since day one. Our day ones. If you a day one, send a, put a message in there. Put a comment in there. Let us know you a day one. Hey, don't y'all be lying. Don't y'all be lying. <laughs> oh, we know who you are. <laughs> we know. We just want to hear from you. Know we know who you are. We just want to hear from you. <laughs> I was a day one. Well, boy, you ain't been all the week. You better get out of here. <laughs> well, now it's time when we get into some topics, some things that's going on in the world around us. Also, got to keep reminding y'all, we got Samantha. She's a day one. Samantha, we got Cheryl. She's a day one. We want to thank our day ones for being there with us. What's going on, people? Mr. Ben, what's going on? So now we want to get to our segment where we talk about some things that's going on around us, some topics, some things that happen, especially over the weekend. And it's this man talk about it. Man talk about it. So we want to remind you, this is also a time if you got a letter you want to send to us, you got a topic or something, a situation that's happening with you, and you just want to get some information, you want to hear our perspective on it, you can... Send us your email at mantalkmondays1 at gmail.com. Mantalkmondays1 at gmail.com. And then you can send us your letter. We can talk about the situation. Everything is anonymous. I'm not going to put your business out in the street. Tell who you are. But send something to us. Let us know. We can talk about it tonight, right? Tonight, it's a lot going on around us. First thing, I don't know. I, I, I don't have I don't have a kid in sports, a female in sports, but Texas is taking a stance against the transgender students who want to participate in girls' sports. So Texas House votes to ban transgender students from girls' sports. This is what we've come to, ladies and gentlemen. What? I guess the amazing thing to me, though, is that it has to go to legislator, though. Legislature. It's got to be voted upon. Because if you are, if you are a transgender and you let's say you was a, a girl and you want to be a guy or vice versa, you shouldn't be able to race against. If you're a guy turning into a, a woman, you should be able to race against other women. You have enough for advantage. Now, just because you nipped and tucked don't mean that you still don't have a testosterone advantage. You can go get shots and all that. So what they should do, D, they should have a transgender Olympics uh, where everybody show up and race against other transgender people. Because it'd be fair. Because it's not fair if you're racing against... If, okay, if I got a daughter who's been training for the Olympics and you come in and you smoke everybody and you're a transgender person, that's not, that's not fair. Am I wrong? That's not fair. You need your own Olympics. You need your own signs. And you need to let people know that you're transgender and you need to cut it out because you're cheating. That's what I'm saying. Is it cheating? Because, and here's the thing when it comes to sports, you got to acknowledge between men and women, there is a difference because you got guys who are transitioning to females and they are, I mean, they whooping. These women, they whooping them. 
You don't hear no man, no women transition to a man competing in none of his his uh his things. He not, she not racing because she don't get cooked. And you're right. I've never heard that. That's one thing I have never heard. I've never mm -hmm. heard of a woman transitioning to a man competing against men in sports. I wonder why that is. Come, listen. Why do you think that is? Well, I think men. I think people want to win. People want got. People want to win at any cost most of the time. And if you place in seventh or eighth and you switch over to you nip and tuck and you move over to the uh, men, the women's races, you finna cook them. You finna cook them like Popeye chicken with the spices on it. You gonna cook them. So, of course, you're going to get over there and do what you do and then get through and then put on your high heels. Now, I'm cool with you putting on your high heels, but get out of the woman's race. We need to be, if you ever raced against a man, you should always have to race. They should check your race accord. Have you raced with men before? You be talking about, uh-uh, no, not me. They say, yes, you have. You raced back in 77 with the men. You should be racing with them now. He says 77. Lloyd says he 100% agrees with you. 100% agrees with you. So uh, are women missing out on the opportunity to step their game up? It's not fair, man. Yeah, they are. It's not it's not fair to it's not fair to women that have been training for that. And you it's like, okay, for example, if I raced against my my son when he was six, I'm gonna beat him every day. And that's the same, it's 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 almost the same way. You have an unfair advantage. Just because you nipped and tucked don't mean it's gonna make you no slower. It's gonna make you no less a man. When you hit them with a 77 cross, a cross from a left, then you're gonna knock them out like you a man. <laughs> you still got man, hey, you still got man knuckles, don't you? Well, don't tell me because I'm looking, you know, it's funny. The other day I was at let me say this. Let me, let me I'm sorry, but I gotta say this. I was at the chicken place the other day, and I don't know, I don't have no business getting no chicken, but I was at the Popeye's place. And I went to say, you know, I'm old school, so I say. Thank you, sir. And man, regardless of how old they are. And I said, thank you, sir. And the guy put his hands out and his nails was longer than my girls. And they was clear and had little tips on it. And I'm like, y'all got somebody got to help me. If you look, if you a chick, you need to have a tag on and say, I'm a chick. You <laughs> need to have some on because I can't keep up with Listen, I'm trying, y'all. I don't want I hate letters go to Derek Smith and <laughs> I'm trying. I am trying, y'all. I'm trying to do. I'm listen. I'm trying to be respectful of what y'all trying to do. Y'all making it hard on a brother. That's yeah, hard. I think I I especially draw the line when it comes to physical contact because you got the MMA fighter who cracked it cracked the old girl's skull. Oh really? Now you know MMA. You know the weight classes are balanced, mm -hmm. but you still can't balance that particular thing out. So it's it's dangerous, especially in contact sports. You can't balance nuts. <laughs> if you had nuts, you can't balance that. If anybody <laughs> had nuts, you need to be in the nuts line. Everybody had nuts or used to have nuts, you need to be in the nuts line. Past the Sam's is, have I been around? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just saying, man. I'm just trying to listen. If you had a son or daughter that was training for something, and one and the and, and, and the transgender wanted to come on do that, it's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair, man. You you're not gonna be no guy wrestling. He gonna be suplexing you. He gonna be body slamming you. You're gonna be looking like hell. Somebody do something. You gonna be you because you go. So the legislature got to come and save the women from that. And see, that's what's getting me. Somebody had to come and say, somebody said, you know what? This ain't right. This ain't right. I said, I'm not going to work. <laughs> I think I'm leaving. I think. <laughs> Hang in there with us, Pastor. Hang in there with us. <laughs> Pastor, Pastor Sam is a day one as well. He's a day one. So we don't want you to go nowhere. So hang in there with us. Ben say it's not equal. You right. It's not, right. Man. It's 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 not. Ivan says you can, you can balance nuts, John. You just gotta have the right women balancing. Oh wow! Wait. Okay. Oh, All right. right. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> this uh. 
The train that came off the tracks. We got to pull it back on the air. Right back. This is about. In other news, in other news, tragically, on the set of, I don't know if it was a TV show or a movie or what it was. It was a movie. It was a movie. It was a movie. The actor, Alec Baldwin, accidentally shot two people, and one of them actually died on the set. Tragically, let me say this tragically. But so he shot two people. So he went pow pow. When he seen the first person fall out of their chair, he should have pulled up and said, "Whoa, whoa!" Because how you shoot two people? Was it with one bullet? Did the bullet did the bullet ricochet to the other person? Yeah, I think it ricocheted. It's like it threw and through the camera or something. And yeah, so. From what I gather, the the person who sets up the stunts is really uh, where things seem to fall apart. You think? Uh, there's been complaints about this person because when they do when they do these types of movies, they have a gun, but the gun is supposed to have blanks in it. They call it a cold gun. Oh, right. So it was signaled that this was a cold gun that he had, and it was hot as a firecracker. I would say, what if you picked it, up? It was hot. Oh brother, it was. But, but can you think oh, about this? Can you, what can you think about this? Do you do you know, man? If you accidentally kill somebody, the movie done. I can't. I, I, I can't. I can't finish the movie no more. I only want. I only want to pick up a gun no more. You know, I, I man, I I wouldn't be the same. It would, it would be tough for me, man. And then you got to look at the people, and and then the people, the person that you shot. They're gonna just bring somebody else in and try to get the move done, man. That's that, bro. That's gotta be tough, man. That's gotta be really tough. Really yeah, tough. I think they say he's he's been inconsolable. He was inconsolable for days. I don't know how he is now, but they say he, he couldn't, no words could, you know. He I think it was a, a young lady, too. I think was you, one man. You kill down. somebody, you kill yeah. somebody, man. You know, I said that set was reckless before that. It was one shot, but that wasn't. The first incident on the set so obviously there was an incident this this particular person who sets up the stunts has been known to be problematic this is the problem if you hire your cousin to get to give him a job yeah but d bullets and no bullets though man what that ain't hard dude where you get a real gun with a bullet in it where you, where you do that at you get to lock the cone or something Y'all supposed to have a budget for prop guns. It's just too much technology out here for you to be using real guns and real bullets anyway. There shouldn't be even be a confusion now. You can make a gun to make the gun sound without actually having anything. And I'm like, why are we still using real guns? Well, when I see somebody get shot, I ain't no more good on the set. They're gonna have to find my replacement because I'm out. I'm out. Oh, y'all shooting for y'all doing that? I'm out. I'm out. Hey, what, but yeah, before I, I go, cut me my check. Before that? I go. Because <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> hey, with the, uh, with the bonus for uh, the traumatic dude, experience. Shoot, so. Dude, think about this. Because because I've, I've had the pleasure of doing a couple of movies. And, man, everybody is in there, though. Everybody looking. They got lights. Don't got, they got the boom guy. They got everybody in there. Dude, you can't, man. They, the people ain't gonna never be the same. You actually seen somebody get shot at and killed, dude. And some that's supposed to be, we've told be make believe. Oh man, I ain't gonna be no more good, man. Yeah. And it was reported that people had walked off the set prior to it because of safety reasons. They weren't following protocol with COVID and just a whole. And so it seemed like it was just a reckless set to begin with. They shouldn't have been filming. Ivan says even blanks that are used are dangerous. Yes, blanks are dangerous too. It's like it's really? I think oh. so. Blanks don't shoot. So what do blanks do? I think they still have the gunpowder, but they don't have the actual the, the metal them. them. Yeah, but they, I mean, hmm. why leave it to chance, man? Why why just right. you know? so with chaos? How do you cure? issues with chaos there was some chaos in some schools in shreveport shreveport louisiana well i think they had like 20 some kids get arrested in a matter of a couple of days from fights oh wow and uh -huh. a group of men 
took it upon themselves to go into the schools themselves to help rectify the situation. These were some dads and they're getting national recognition dads to the rescue. These men went into the schools to help curb all of the foolishness that was going on. And the kids are reported that they liking it, man. Well, there has to be a healthy fear of something. Because I have I have been up to my up to my uh, daughter's school when she was in school, and I remember this little boy was cutting up in the hallway. And I looked at that little boy and I say, Boy, you know better than that. You know, act like you got some sense up here. See, I'm not a teacher, I'm not bound by the same rules and stuff that teachers are bound by. I'll snatch you up. You know, get so, and I'm sure most of the dads are like that. Seriously, yeah. I'm sure most of them are like, man, we're not up here to play with y'all. Y'all gonna act like y'all got some sense. And I think I think that's I think that benefits the school. It does. It makes a difference. Now kids that come to actually learn, because if you got all that stuff going on, man, you're not comfortable sitting in class. You're not comfortable walking around the school because you don't know when something's going to pop off. Yeah. But the fact mm -hmm. that the kids that want to learn, the kids that's there for school, they can go to class without worrying about all of this craziness going on. That's a huge plus for that school. Now, will it work everywhere? I don't know, but it's working for them. It's a start, man. It's a it start. Is. You know, it is a start. It, I mean, how how can we get men in these schools more besides teaching? Because I don't know. Well, first we got to get them in back in the house. Oh, okay. If we, if we can get them back in the house, then we can get them back to the school. But we got to get them back in the house first. If they were back in the house, you think this would be going on at the school? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you still think the foolishness would be going I, on? I, I think I think so, man. Unless you unless we take out, you know, we talk about this all the time, taking our communities back. And this is the way we take our communities back. Because we need a we need a stronger man present rather than police. We need a stronger man present in our communities, man. So we can take us, men can take the communities back. Absolutely. Like Ivan said, dad's on duty. Yeah. Mika says, believe it or not, kids love structure. Mm -hmm. Those dads give those kids a sense of stability and protection. I love it. If if they can do it in the school, why can't they do it other places? Well, it's easy to, I think it's easy for us to kind of criticize what places they do it in. But I think this is the start, man, because our kids are at the school. You know, I think it, I just think it means something when our kids are at the school and we go there to, to protect our kids. We st hey, we get in where we fit in. Absolutely, absolutely. The power of dads in the house. Hmm. Now, as we talking about them getting in the school, getting in the house, getting in the community, you mentioned the house. You need to get in the house more. If dads can fix the problems at the house. Or can dads fix the problem at the house? Uh, dad can fix the problem, but it's just not dad. It's just dad's, not you know, it, it's, it's, this thing this thing depends on both of us. We, we have to want it. Because I don't think people oftentimes uh, get into relationships wanting the same things. You want me because I got a six pack, I'm six two and I got long hair. But then when you get in there, you get to, you get to figure out who I am. Now you don't want to. Now you now, but well, I don't want that. I don't want that. Oh my god, you started some. Ben says, balance them nuts, he'll be back at the house. You just started some. <laughs> so getting getting men back where they need to be in the house. You talk about having the two parents, having the balance, and all of this. How do we get out of balance? How do we get out of whack? Cause we we selfish. We selfish. We get we get into we get into relationships and things that we want or we think we want at the time, and then once we get into them, then we realize that's not what we wanted. We and we try to cut away from it, or we don't try to. We just cut away from it. So I guess that kind of leads us to what are we talking about tonight? Because we're talking about keeping the man and the woman in the house. Ivan says, 
Why Drummond trying to be all conservative tonight? <laughs> it's a build up. Back, it's, a man. Build up. <laughs> it's a build up. We got- <laughs> You want me to come right out the gate, hollering and screaming? Just hold on. I'm, I'm gonna get there. Just hold on. <laughs> they want your own team, man. They want your own team. <laughs> All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about tonight. We're gonna get into this discussion tonight. And we're talking about the true cost of a good marriage. The true cost of a good marriage. And that's speaking personally i don't think people really count the cost going in people don't count the cost because they don't know what a good marriage is most of us hadn't seen it most of us think a good marriage is clear and he cliff hustable on tv most of us don't we most of us see the, the the great marriages on tv we don't actually see them in person there's not enough people that we know. I'm trying to think of when I was growing up. I can think about two people that that group that were married and grew old together. I can think about two couples. That's it. That's it. We don't see it, man. We don't see it. We do not see it. We won't be able to recognize if it. I don't think we recognize it was on TV. On TV, Monique <laughs> said our black families have been torn apart. I believe that's one reason we're out of whack. So, because you got people that get together and they even get married, but staying married, that's a whole different ball game. See, listen, let me just, let me, let me say this. I just, I, I know I'm, I, we didn't talk about this. Man, staying married is hard. Staying married is difficult. And I don't want, I don't want to even make y'all think that it's easy because I have been married for some eons, okay? That, that's a long eons. You hear me? That's like yeah. Star Trekian. That's Star Trekian <laughs> pie. And let me tell you, it is difficult, man, but you got to want that. First of all, let me say this. It's not when you get married, it's on you and him when y'all get married. But when you start having kids, it's no longer about you guys. That's one thing me and my wife, we, we, when we came in, we was like, hey, listen, both our parents was, was out. The least we could do is when we bring kids into this world, try to stay together for the kids. Now, I know people are going to say, yeah, but if you're miserable, if you're miserable, I get that. But at some point, it ha- it's big- marriage is bigger than you. And, and but That's exactly where I was about to go because that's what you hear from a lot of people. You, you know, it, you shouldn't stay together for the kids because they could be, could be miserable. Nice. And all this kind of stuff. Does it have to be miserable in the house? No, it don't have to be. But if you thought, listen, if you thought about, I'm gonna have to stay with this this uh, fool <laughs> when I have kids, or, or or vice versa, you're gonna be more careful about who you lay down there with. You're gonna be a lot more careful. You know, you got to stay with them. And I hear that, but I don't see people being careful. I think you can throw the warning signs out there. You can throw, I mean, you can put movies, books, all this kind of stuff. People still going to do what they want to do, even well, when they see it ain't working. Well, yes, Derek. People do what they want to do because there is no consequence. Mm. You start sprinkling some consequences in, and most of the time we say we're willing to pay the consequence. But I think it's easier to stay married than it is to pay the consequence of being with somebody and then not being with them. That to me, that's a much tougher consequence. Because let me tell you something. When you dating people, man, and you giving yourself to people, that is the hard part for me. Cheryl, Cheryl at least tries and wants to stay married to me. Mm-hmm. Because she know, remember what I used to be. She remember I used to be 6'2". And she remember I used to have a pop, 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 pop on the stomach. So she knows it's in there. She may not be able to see it, but she knows it's in there. Now, when you start being with different people, man, do you dragging that person behind you in your pre in your relationship? We everybody don't want you don't nobody want to admit it. Listen, I'm gonna tell you because when I see I'm on Facebook and I see uh my my ex my exes some of my exes we friends on Facebook, uh-huh. and I'm, I would be lying to you if I said if I didn't when I see them sometimes I didn't I wouldn't 
I didn't think about some of the past things and, and, and stuff that we had been in together. I'll be lying to you if I tell you that. And you lie if you tell me that you don't think it sometimes. So <laughs> hold up. That's, hold up. Hold up. Hit the brakes real quick. You still friends with your exes on Facebook and stuff? Not really. Well, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell yeah. the truth, same the devil. Yes, 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 yes. Hey, yes. hey ben, ben agrees with you. He says staying, staying married is the hard part. Absolutely. Staying married, staying is the hard part. And Carlene agrees as well. So we got amens out there. <laughs> ben says keep it a keeper. But you still friends with your exes? <laughs> Dude, I put time and distance between me and my exes. Bruh, no. But Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I'm, I'm because, because here's the thing. Here's the thing that people got to understand. You get married. Yes. You go through the honeymoon phase. Everything good and everything, you know. But there comes a time when y'all not vibing. Y'all not as good as y'all, you know, as it started out to be. And if you don't have the right mindset going into this, it'll mess you up. But when you are in this place where y'all not feeling each other, you start entertaining past thoughts, past relationships, past encounters you had with people. And even to the point that those encounters seem like the greatest thing that ever happened to you in your life. Although when you was in it, you couldn't stand it. But now it seems like the greatest thing. Cheryl says, people don't want to work. No one wants to deal with anything anymore. Daryl Daryl says, nothing keeps a married couple to, together like both people being overweight. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants me. No one wants them. The Bible helps too. <laughs> So Daryl said, if you want to stay together, just go ahead and get, get just gain weight, get fat. <laughs> Monique says, I think some people say it's not the best thing to stay together for the kids. When there is abuse or other toxicity involved, it may be a greater issue. It's not just black and white. All right. All right. And here, I guess here's my thing with that. Abuse Listen, I get it. Being with a, a person that's an abuser, especially physically, especially physically, I, I get it. But my thing is because we're talking about people don't people don't think right going in. That this, that this person turned into this person once you put the ring on, or were they the person all the time? We were talking about you can't hear me, y'all can't hear me. Okay, we were talking about some uh previous relationships, and uh, he was saying that man, I couldn't believe that she was this, <laughs> I couldn't believe that she was that, but ultimately, all that stuff was there. We just we just choose to ignore it for the how do I say the bigger thing we were trying to, to get or go after. So we so it was always there. We just kind of choose to ignore it. And I think we're guilty of that on both sides. But a lot of times what we what we want the most is in front of us. And I can put up with you acting foolish for a little bit as long as I get to grant the, the prize and whatever that may be. How do we miss something so big though? That's pretty costly. So especially end up with somebody who's physically abusive. But if the booty big though, you can look over that. If the booty, if the booty big, you can you look back past a lot of stuff. See, it's, you know what? And it's funny because when you hear somebody say, you be like, "Nah, man, booty and everything." No, no, it, it, it's a lot. We we put more weight on that when we dating and trying to get somebody than we do anything else. I, I can rock with you to to this to a certain degree because Halle Berry can't keep no man. You're right. She, she's been noted as one of the most beautiful women in Hollywood, but she can't keep nobody. Ain't nobody trying to keep her. They trying to get the booty. Well, here's the thing. Halle Berry becomes just Halle after a while. So you, who? The person you with just becomes 
Yes. No one every day so and so after a while. But now you take for granted that she wants to be married to somebody, they then why why go through these relationships and get married and stuff? Why do people take on marriage with no intent on actually sticking through it and trying to make it work? But I don't think people go in with with the intent of not staying together. They I think ultimately, yeah, we can stay together. That I don't think they they don't they don't want to be together. Cheryl says we miss the signs because we don't pay attention to them. Right, we don't pay attention, but there is something distracting us, and I don't think it's always the person. It's the booty. <laughs> I've been saying, if she tell me make me feel good, like she said in Monsters Ball, I'll marry her. And, and once you get her and realize that she cuckoo for cocoa puffs, you'll be another ex. Okay, now it's easy to say that about Holly Berry. But most of y'all fools out here is cuckoo for cocoa puffs like Holly Berry is. Most of us are, D. And that's the thing. We just got to find somebody that's willing to put up with us. Because we all got some loose screws, man. And that's the thing. Christiana says, I don't know why people so pressed to get married. I'm having a blast being single. At least somebody told the truth today. At least somebody, at least one person already told the truth because marriage ain't for everybody. Not yet. Now, when Christina gets about ages about 10 years, she's gonna be talking about, Lord, I need to fit time. Me sell down to get married. And we're gonna say, no, 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 Christina. Now remember you was kicking it. You keep kicking it. Because most because most people want to be married sooner, sooner than later. Especially when when they get older, they they tired of running around having fun. They're gonna she gonna want to be married. She gonna want to be married. All right, so Monique says the physical abuse is terrible, and hopefully you can see that and leave in the beginning. But what about the emotional and mental abuse? That's hard to see at first. There are signs. There are, there are signs. There are. There are. One of the signs that you deal with somebody who's probably gonna be that way is if this person starts to begin to try to isolate you from those people who are close to you. They start trying to isolate you from family. It's just, they try to isolate you from friends. You want to go kick it with different people. They not feeling it and all this kind of stuff. And it's, I just want to be around you. I just want to be with you. Just us. Let us go and do X, Y, Z. That's a red flag you got to look out for. That's one you got to watch out for. At least it should be. Because people lose their mind in two different instances. When they get somebody in that church. They stop using any common sense when it comes to relationships and in church. In church, is God got it. When you're outside of church, it's whoever I'm with got it. And as long as they're trying to be with me and I'm happy, that's really all we want at time when either you smothering them or they smothering you. And after you've been together a little while, everybody wants to breathe after a little while. But but if you get into a relationship allowing that, that, that's going to be the norm for it. And, and the first time you try to pull away, you might get smuggled or something in your sleep or something. I, I don't know if it's always about the other person, though. You know, we talk about you miss it. I think people see it, but they ignore it because they don't want to be alone so bad that they walk in the situations that they shouldn't be in. Okay, okay, all right, then I'm okay. I'm gonna do you that one, okay. But I'm gonna say this so, would you agree that because of what they're coming from with their exes, they should be willing to put up with more stuff to try to make this work? I think they probably understand more now what it costs to actually be with somebody, have a little better understanding. But I don't know if they really just all the way ready. Have you really healed from that relationship that you was with in that situation? Because you could be inviting more of the same if if not. Cheryl says people like the idea of marriage, but don't understand or grasp what comes with it. Two people coming from two different backgrounds are coming together to make the house one. They don't grasp the give and take. We live in, to Cheryl's point, we live in a world where it's all take. Don't nobody want to give nothing. Matter of fact, 
it's what's the conversation that you hear single people talk what you bring to the table yeah yeah and then i and what the and and you know how you when you sell in the car you know what you talk about d everything that the car can do all the features it has how, how yeah. smooth it rides how you get how it's stirring by itself but that's not what we do we talking about don't worry about how i ride how you ride what features you got what you what can you do and yeah. we, we don't got away from that we got completely away from that it just it, it, it boggles my mind how careless people are with something that's so huge or maybe maybe marriage don't really mean nothing no more well, you can get, you know what I'm saying? You can just toss to the side whenever you feel like it. Or when you're not happy, aside from somebody being violent and all that kind of stuff, I just, I don't know if, if people... Some, Moni says, sometimes you just say, what? <laughs> Podcast people can't see what you say, but yeah, it's just, we'll just say expletive. We'll just say that. But you, but they... I don't know if people is it fair to judge people on not being able to stay married when they really don't know what it entails and what it takes to stay married, D, when they really hadn't been through anything. Because let me tell you something, you got to fight to stay married. Ain't nothing gonna I'm, ain't nothing gonna eventually things are gonna change. Do people have that type of fight in them these days though? <sighs> I don't think I, like it. I don't I think commitment changes you. Commitment makes you become more of who you're supposed to be. But if you can jump out anytime you feel like it, you never stay in long enough to develop to be who you need to be. And the problem is everybody wants everybody to be completely perfect. They don't want to work on nothing. We want turnkey relationships and turnkey marriages these days. Turnkey meaning i don't have to do nothing i can just walk into this thing we're gonna have vacations every time we feel like it we're gonna have as many kids as we say we won't have we're gonna have a bank account full of money and the whole nine and everything gonna be you know what i'm saying Chris, christiana said seems stressful and unnecessary to me <laughs> it seems stressful but you're gonna deal with stress anyway but you here's gonna you're gonna deal with stress being single too. A lot more stress being single than you will be with somebody that's exactly. with somebody that's actually trying to get your heart. Oh, now you just said something right there. When somebody actually trying to get your heart, oh yeah, you're gonna deal with some things. Cheryl says you have to be unselfish in marriage. She brings up a point. You have to be unselfish. But we're taught, I think we're taught to be selfish more than anything. Lisa says, you can't fight by yourself. It takes two. You're right. It takes two. But that one can show bait that second one in anytime they feel like it. <laughs> I, I, think, I think if you prove, and maybe this is a bad, then maybe this is the wrong way I'm putting it, but somebody has to want to be married more than they do or more than they want to be divorced. Somebody has to want, someone needs to say, hey, man, look, I'm in this. We, we said we was gonna do this and we're gonna do this and I ain't going nowhere until we, until this thing get, I'm not going nowhere I'm and now now granted there are extenuating circumstances let me just say that there are extenuating circumstances the circumstances but we should at least you should be learning from it see my problem is people are jumping into our relationships and they're not learning anything from them. let's get Lee Shield says even marriage is faith-based if they can't trust believe and allow god to lead it you will throw it away every time mm -hmm. and here's my thing lee we want god to lead as long as he we we cool with what he's saying but when we want out we want out yeah. we can follow god we can hear god for everybody else except ourselves the husband ain't acting right are we all up in church and all we hear from the pastor is what the husband should be doing and vice versa what the what the other person should be doing we never hear what we should be doing 
we never hear for ourselves what changes we need to make am i being unreasonable am i being the one who's being picky all the time am i the one starting all this we never ask these questions well most people kind of put on uh when they're looking at themselves they kind of put on the rose cutter glasses most of us know we're a mess but we don't want to admit to nobody that we're a mess most of us know most of us know whoo lord i i know i'm something else lord but listen, I'm just asking you to be honest with yourself, because if you be honest with yourself, you can work on making making yourself the best version of yourself that you can. Because we all, again, I say this every week, we want the best version of somebody else. They don't deserve the best version of us. You're absolutely right. And most people go into relationships, they go into marriage, more concerned about who that person is going to be. And they never think about who they're going to be. How many people try to say, what kind of wife do I want to be? What kind of husband do I want to be? And try to work towards that. And a lot of times when you're jumping in and out of relationships, you're not staying around long enough for somebody, for somebody to, to point out your blind spots. Hmm. So you can fix them. So you carrying around all this messed up stuff and you telling yourself that you got yourself together, but everybody else sees different. And when they bring it up to you, you get such an attitude, don't nobody want to fool with you. You wonder why you by yourself. Well, DJ just told y'all that. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear what he had said? Because nobody, ultimately, nobody wants to be by themselves. But but oh. do you but do you want to be with somebody bad enough to change you? To change you though, because everybody want to be with somebody. But what if you the problem? Because the only thing that's consistent in a relationship that you've had is you. Are, are we willing to make those changes? And because I think most of the time we'll make excuses as long as somebody would allow us to. You know, we miss a whole lot and we've been set up to fail. Really, when you look at it, we've been set up to fail when it comes to marriage, when it comes to relationships and the whole nine, because people have fed us this thing that we can do certain things and still make it work. And it don't work like that. I'm me and you we had a conversation the other day, and you said something you came across something that somebody said, and it made so much sense. It says they say movies and music are the lies we tell about love. I want everybody to think about that. Movies and music are the lies we tell about love. For example, my dude, my main cat, I love to love me some baby face. Babyface said he'll cook your dinner. <laughs> he'll pick you up from work. You won't have to. I'll cook your dinner. Uh, as soon as you get home work, I'll pay your rent. I'll do all that. I would do all of that. But he can't stay married. He can't stay married to somebody. And a lot of times we try to base our relationships off of songs and TV shows that we see. And we don't actually know what really goes on underlining those things those those things you know we hollywood wants to sell a fairy tale to you whether it be in music or in movies or tv shows they want to say your fairy tale but that's not real life that's not that claire and cliff uh-uh claire was gone too much and claire was too sassy cliff was was uh was he an obg obgy what was he a, uh he was yeah he was obgy you think she was gonna be cool with that no. <laughs> you tripping. You tripping. They ain't never had no issue. She ain't never check his phone to see where he was. He ain't never, every time he had to rush out, she was she ain't never go back to see what was up. The kids was always talking back. They ain't never snatched one of them up. Come on, man. That ain't real. We can't base our relationship out of that foolishness. Mika said that is good. He, listen. But these are the expectations. This is what sets our expectations for relationships. Yeah. So no yeah. wonder why we don't we don't do these things right. We don't we're not successful in marriages. We're not successful in relationships because we're going in with the wrong information, with the wrong expectations. Listen, let me say, let me say this. Romance is tiring. Romance will wear you out. You listen now what i'm saying is this if you gotta have the expectation 24 7 can't nobody keep up with that i'm like eddie murphy and uh being say that's a real statement i'm like eddie murphy and uh 
vampire in Brooklyn. If every day a sunny day, then what's a sunny day? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there has to be some contrast in there somewhere. Yeah. We can't go on trips every four months. Yeah. Somebody got to work. Somebody got to do some kind of, you know what I'm saying? It can't be. But the thing is, the more you do it, the more familiar it gets. So I got to step it up every time. You're going to run out of patience. You're going to run out of money. You're going to run out of everything after a while. But see, the, the, the trip part about what you're saying is we can go on trips every four months. But are you going to allow me or are we going to allow we to work to put us in a situation where we can do that? Because I'm going to be gone some nights. I'm going to be gone some days when I'm constantly trying to get this money right so we can live like you want to live. You may be gone. What if your job is calling you to be gone and trip in and all across the country trying to get this paper so we can do that? Are we prepared to pay the sacrifice for the life the life that we're trying to live being married? And the answer is no, because the first time you get to be gone too much, I'm going to be complaining. Exactly. I'm going to complain. You ain't giving me enough time. You, We about to have some of them... Uh, what they call them? Uh, them conversations. What we talk the limp oh, conversations. Yeah. <laughs> limp conversations, right? Linda, Linda Taylor says. Uh, Linda Trailer says you are telling it like it is, one hundred percent. Mika said y'all preaching tonight. Here's 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 the thing that that gets me about. Yes, you can take a vacation every four months, but if you bring up the same place every time, you're gonna get bored. If every four months you go going to the cab and guess what? I don't want to go to no cabin no more. I want to go to this place and that place. Mm -hmm. And then too, what's the expectation going in? What if you get somebody who don't like taking trips like that? Do y'all even share the same values with the whole, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's too much to, to glance over. It's too Good. much there to just lightly glance over it. It's too much to leave a, a, at a chance that we might be getting into something that we really enjoy. It's too exactly. much. It's too much. It's too exactly. much because you find because you uh, because you all this. I can't because of where I am in my life. I'm trying to build something. Now, if you just want to, if you just want to slam bam, thank you, man. Then we can do that too. But I'm, but right now, in this point of my life, I'm really trying to build something because, man, listen, to, we don't whatever time you spend wasting in that in, in that stuff, you don't get that back. And when you find somebody you really love and want to be with, you don't wish you had that time to spend with them. Right. Right. It's one thing people fail to realize. The minute you get into a relationship, you are now placing some part in somebody else's hands that you don't control anymore. Mm -hmm. You are now dependent on that person for something. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. listen, the chances of them handling it where you're never disappointed is zero to none. You're going to have disappointments. Mm -hmm. Pastor Sam said everybody is seeking to have their flesh satisfied in some fashion. However, mm -hmm. only God can satisfy that desire because our desires came from him. God can only satisfy God. The problem with it, Pastor, is people got artificial artificial satisfactions that they they running after. That the things think. that we that we think will satisfy yes. us, yes. Yes. and the things that everything around us is telling us that we should be pursuing, and we never pursue the right things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we too worried about what people gonna say if I really go after the real thing, boy. You... I'm gonna be the fool. I'm gonna be stupid. Oh, you a fool for him. Oh, you a fool for her. Can, can I, you gotta be a fool. Let me just say this. Listen, everybody gonna be a fool for somebody. You right. might well get ready. You might well get ready. You gonna be a fool for somebody. And the problem is, don't nobody want to be a fool for nobody. But you got to be. You got to be. Yeah. That Sam says, until we seek after God. And he's right. God should be the focus. I just don't think people are conditioned to go after God anymore. No, no not, not. We're too small for that. We're too small for that. We don't, no, it, no. It, it, it ain't until somebody didn't 
went upside yeah. our head. It ain't until we done been broken and homeless. Wait, why why do we gotta wait till everything hit rock bottom and everything fall apart before we see God? Dude? It ain't till you don't put your heart out there to somebody that you know wasn't for you. Mm. And they leave that we go that we look for God. Mm-hmm. It ain't till then. Because I, I I don't know, I tell the story. I want to marry somebody that was really, really good to me, but she wasn't no good for me. And I said, <laughs> and I said, God, oh, I know, I know, I know what you're gonna say. But if you don't want me to do this, God, you got to stop me. And uh, lo and behold, it was a, a brick wall the next day. I didn't get to move. Uh, <laughs> but listen, but I had sense enough to put God in it. See, I'm just curious. You got to tell the whole story. Go on, finish that story. What? Well, <laughs> Go on, finish that story. Oh, well, okay. So uh, I was going to marry this girl. Um, I was going to marry this girl that was uh, that my high school sweetheart. I, was, I wanted to marry her. And uh, I said, God, you know, if you don't want me to marry her, and I knew she wasn't no good for me, I knew it, but she was just way too good for me, it, for me, to me, excuse me, to me. So I said, God, if you don't want me to marry her, you got to do something, because I'm buying her ring tomorrow. I got, I know about how much money I got, and I'm buying her ring tomorrow. So I, I got up the next day, and I had a check for $18. My check for $18. The woman that cashed my check started laughing and said, I got to break a 20 and give you your money. I, said, I don't really see nothing funny. I don't know what's going on here, but that ain't funny. But so, and I, and because God so, so adamantly stopped me, I never looked back that way again. Cause I knew, okay. Cause I knew it. I just needed some help getting there. And listen, and when you need help getting there, bring God in. Cause he, if you get him in it, oh, he's going to be up in it. You hear me? He's going to be up in it. Lee Shield says you can spend endless hours learning someone. But people change. We are ever changing. God is the only thing that stays stays the same. If you aren't rooted, you can hang it up. And let me say this. Let me say this to Lee. We are always changing. Everybody's changing. God is the only thing that stays the same. But if you go through life not expecting things to change, you're going to be sorely disappointed in yourself mm-hmm. and other people. Mm-hmm. The thing is, mm-hmm. are we talking about the change? Are we communicating the change? But if you... If so, if you you get somebody who's making twenty thousand dollars a year, you are expecting him to to progress from that at some point. Yes, you, there you go. You're right. You're right. You're right. But if he mm-hmm. if he go from twenty to eighty, his attitude gonna change. Are you ready for the attitude change? He move everything changes. But are you still gonna rock with him? Are y'all gonna talk about it? And that's the thing we talk about really? the true cost of marriage. Expecting everything to stay the same is insanity. Yeah. People right. change, things change, situations change, and we change with the changes. But you can handle the changes if you are smarter. You talk about things, and if you stay with somebody for a period of time, you're gonna see the changes. You're gonna see them. You're gonna not just their physical appearance, but everything about them gonna change. Christiana said, "Wait, y'all get with people who make twenty thousand? <laughs> no, that's just how hold, on, hold on, hold on, Christiana, Christiana, you gonna miss something." You gonna miss something? Cause, cause they can't, they can't take her like she want to go on Twitter. Girl, if he can budget and do coupons, girl, y'all can be all over the world. Don't play, don't play. Everybody want finished products, and that's the problem. You want to wait a minute? You what are you? Are you the finished product? It, boy, boy, boy. Have you got to where you see yourself being in in twenty years? We are. No, most of the time we have, but we want somebody to take a chance on us, but we're not really taking a chance on nobody else. <laughs> Mika said, Won't God stop it? John, it probably is because you were too tall and had a six pack. <laughs> hey, you're too much, guys. I got to stop it. You're feeling yourself way too much. You got to humble him. <laughs> he said, God, please make John six two for three days. One for the Father. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? What did I do? <laughs> you do not want to see John at 6'3. Oh, oh, you mess around here. Cheryl on here <laughs> telling all the business. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh man. Wow. Man, final thoughts, man. Final wow. thoughts. All right. All right. So, my final thought for this evening is this. When, most time when we when we get into relationships, 
we're often disappointed by people. And that's because we put our expectation on people when the expectation when the expectation needs to be put on ourselves. You should never put no more on somebody else than you would expect of yourself. And even when you do, gotta remember, everybody's different. Everybody's trying to be delivered from something. And we just don't, and we still trying to figure out what that is. So take it easy on people. Remember, they got standards just like you do. And whose standards are you actually trying to measure up to? Because there's somebody on the other end of that note, just like you are. And that's my final thought. I've often heard people say that be the change that you want to see. We put so much stock on the other person, so much into the other person and who they need to be and who we want them to be that we never focus on ourselves. And in not focusing on ourselves, you attract what you are. Some of us feel ourselves way more than we should at a certain point in time. So maybe it's time for you to take stock of your own self, see where you are and make sure you're the right person for somebody else. And maybe you will attract the right person to you. It's time to start looking inward, not so much outward. There's a lot of work to be done on us. But people grow in relationships, in friendships, in, in marriages. So you got to be willing to find somebody who you can grow with rather than somebody who is going to bring everything to the table right away. Sometimes that table has to be built and that takes patience. So are you willing to be patient with somebody so you can build that table so both of y'all can eat? And that's our King Speaks for this week. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, he said so both of y'all can eat. Bro, we both got to eat, man. Did you notice that he didn't blink his eyes when he had said that? <laughs> we both got to eat, man. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> It ain't it ain't right until everybody wins. Yeah, you're right. It ain't right until everybody wins. And you have to be just as concerned about them winning as you are you winning. Because boy, Teddy P used to say it all the time. What do you say, D? What do you say, D? Feel so good <laughs> loving somebody. And somebody look you back. No, that's a fact. <laughs> he wouldn't have made the song. He wouldn't have made the song if it weren't real. Everybody want to be loved like they want. Like everybody wants the same kind of love given back to them. And you should, and you deserve that. Let me say this to you. And you deserve that. Everybody deserves that type of love. But are you willing to sacrifice to give it though? It's about the sacrifice. Yes. Don't forget, people, like, share, subscribe, click on the notification so you are notified every time we're on. Mika said, baby, y'all preach tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Just because that's a whole word, B. That's a good Dude, word, B. We're trying to help people. we trying to help word, people, right? We we got 30 years here, 13 years on my end. We're trying to stick this thing out. We're trying to stick together because we need more people to show people it can be done. Mm -hmm. All right? Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast, available to Apple, Google, Spotify, Spreaker, any way you listen to podcasts. Tell all your friends. Tell all your friends about the podcast. Tell them about Man Talk Mondays. Remember, that's Man Hyphen Talk Mondays. Make sure you put that hyphen in there. We got some imposters out there. Make sure you put that <laughs> hyphen in there. Right? Yeah. Real quick before we leave, man, let them know where they can find you, brother. All right. Uh, YouTube at, Yo at John Yogi. Instagram at Yogi Lou. Facebook at Comedian John Yogi. And at Yogi Lou at Yahoo.com. And I got two movies, D, that I'm working on. Two. Somebody called me about another movie this week. I got two movies I'm working on. Oh, wow. Two, wow. two bro. Yeah. So y'all stay tuned. We're going to keep y'all informed on everything that's happening. We got big things happening. We're part of BS3 Network. We got big things happening with BS3. We're going to yes. announce all the good stuff that's happening. Uh, you can find me, at Derek Smith, Facebook, also Overcomers Empowerment Ministries. And listen, you want to be, you want to stay tuned to what we're doing. We got a lot of things happening, right? Yes, absolutely. It ends up change or blowing. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got my wind sound. <laughs> <laughs> God is good. Absolutely, He absolutely, absolutely. is. Absolutely. Christina says, "I prefer 
the table made already. I don't know about all this bill stuff, but good luck out there. Y'all, God bless. Oh, man. She almost took me in again, man. She almost took me in again. You can't, people can't, <laughs> listen, people can't handle perfection. You can't handle perfection. Hmm. If they perfect and you not, you're going to always have to deal with the pressure of you not being perfect. Sure. If you perfect and they not, you're going to always irritate them and you ain't going to never be happy. And sometimes you think you perfect and you not perfect. And because they just won't tell you, you go around. All right. All right. I'm done. Hi. Right, so next <laughs> week. Uh, <laughs> y'all ready to get it. Y'all ready to get it. it. <laughs> stop, stop, trying to, stop trying to bait me in, y'all. All right. <laughs> We appreciate everybody. We appreciate the love. Thank y'all for joining us. We'll be back next Monday. Man hyphen talk Mondays here at seven o'clock every Monday. We'll see y'all next week. Peace out. Have a